Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 10. It's on gravitational mass. No name is as synonymous with gravity as Sir Isaac Newton, who figured out that any two objects have a force between each other, and that's that gravitational force, and it's based on two things. Number one is the size of the two masses, and then the second thing is as a square of the radius, or the distance between their two centers of mass. And so mass can be inertial mass, like we learned in the last video. Inertial mass is based on interactions between forces and objects. It's best summarized by Newton's second law, where if you apply a net force to an object, it will accelerate, and we can use that acceleration to calculate inertial mass. Gravitational mass is different. It's an interaction between a mass and a gravitational field, such as the field that's produced around the Earth. And so that force down on that mass is equal to the gravitational mass. And scientists have noted something interesting, that it doesn't matter what the mass is. If an object is in free fall, it falls with the same exact acceleration. And so gravitational mass, as I said before, is based on two things the mass of the two objects, and note this, that the force on object one and two are identical. The earth pulls on you, but you're also pulling on the earth. And then the, different, the other thing is the radius between those two objects. And so if we separate these two objects, how could I make the force of attraction between the two of them larger? Well, I could just increase the mass of one of those objects, and it's going to be a greater force on both of them. How else could I increase the force between the two? If I decrease that radius, as I make this distance smaller, the overall force is going to become larger. So the closer it gets, the greater that force is going to be. And so what are some objects on our planet that are like that? An apple and the Earth itself. And so why does an apple fall to Earth? It never really hit Newton on the head, but he was inspired by watching an apple fall. It's because it's in a gravitational field and that force is pulling the apple down. It's also what's holding all of us to the planet right now. And so if I want to measure the gravitational mass, how do I do that? Well, I could use something like a balance. How does a balance work? You put a known gravitational mass on one side, that's the kilogram, and then we'll put an apple on the other side and we see how much it balances. Now, I've never seen an apple that weighs two, uh, over two pounds, maybe an apple laptop, and so we have to use a scale or rather a balance that's a little bit different. And so let's set it up like this. We've got a known gravitational mass on this side, one kilogram, the apple is not going to balance on this side, so we'd have to move that point at which we're holding it over to the side. So this starts to resemble a triple beam balance, for example. And now we have it perfectly balanced. The gravitational masses on either side of that pivot point are equal. And so it's easy to figure out the mass of the apple now. We just measure the distance, and the distant units are somewhat arbitrary. It could be in centimeters or inches. It doesn't matter as long as we're using the same units on each side. And then you simply solve like this. And so on, on the left side, we've got my mass one. That's the mass of the apple times the distance. In this case, it's going to be 10. On the right side, we have the mass of the known mass, the kilogram, times the distance, which is one. And so I just plug in those values, and then I solve for the mass of the apple, and it's going to be a tenth of a kilogram. Now, a really good question might be, could I take this balance to the moon, and is it still going to read 0.1 kilogram? Well, the answer might surprise you. You might think we bring it to the moon, it's not going to work anymore. Um, well, it works exactly the same because on the moon, that gravitational force on the known kilogram is also going to be affected by the gravity of the moon. And so on the moon, you're going to measure the same exact gravitational mass. Now, you might be confused if we were to look using a scale, for example, um, and talking about weight, we'd find the weight's going to change. But gravitational mass is really a measure of how much material is in the object and therefore how much that gravitational field is pulling on it. And scientists have noted some interesting things on our planet, going way back to Galileo, who probably didn't drop objects from the Leaning Tower of Pisa, but rather rolled these uh, balls down an inclined plane and varied the amount of mass, and he found that they all roll down with the same acceleration. And so Newton worked forward with this using pendulums, and even astronauts today are finding the same thing. So Dave Scott, when he was on the Apollo 15 mission, uh, talks about Galileo and this interesting fact. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery 
about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Now, if you were to try that on our planet, it's not going to work. This only works in a vacuum. Otherwise, air resistance is going to affect it greatly. And so did you learn how inertial mass, which is based on the inertia of an object and can be measured using forces and acceleration, differs from gravitational mass? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.